Hare Krishna. We continue reading from teachings of Queen Kunti. So this is the sixth prayer. It's from Srimad Bhagavatam 1823, entitled The Master of the Senses. Yatha Rishikesha Kalena Devaki Kamsena Rudhati Chiram Suchar Pita Vimochita Ham Chas Sahat Maja Vibho Tavyeva Nathena Muhur Vipad Kanat O Rishikesha, Master of the Senses and Lord of Lords, you have released your mother Devki who was long imprisoned and distressed by the envious King Kamsa and me and my children from a series of constant dangers. So we we'll read from the purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shla Prabhupada. Devki, the mother of Krishna and sister of King Kans, was put into prison along with her husband, Vasudev, because the envious king was afraid of being killed by Devki's eighth son, Krishna. The king killed all the sons of Devki who were born before Krishna. But Krishna escaped the danger of child slaughter because he was transferred to the house of Nanda Maharaj. Lord Krishna's foster father, Kunti Devi, along with her children, was also saved from a series of dangers. But Kunti Devi was shown far more favor because Lord Krishna did not save the other children of Devki, whereas he saved the children of Kunti Devi. This was done because Devki's husband, Vasudev, was living, whereas Kunti Devi was a widow, and there was no one to help her except Krishna. The conclusion is that Krishna bestows more favor upon a devotee who is in greater dangers. Sometimes he puts his pure devotees in such dangers because in that condition of helplessness, the devotee becomes more attached to the Lord. The more the attachment is there for the Lord, the more success is there for the devotee. So Kunti Maharani is saying that uh, she's feeling, Kunti Maharani is feeling that she's so fortunate that Krishna, he saved her children. He kept saving her time and time again, and he saved her children also. Although Devki was also suffering, of course, Krishna, uh, he protected Devki and Vasudev, but uh, Krishna showed more favor to Kunti Maharani, even than to Devki. Why? Because Vasudev was there. Devki's husband was there who was able to protect her. But Kunti Devi, she had no one. Her, her family members had all turned against them. They were the one who wanted to kill her children. So she, she completely surrendered herself to Krishna. You know, she, 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 be, she was so attached to Krishna. She knew no one can help her except Krishna. And Krishna came every time. Each time they were in danger, Krishna came to help them and protect them. So th this, is Krishna's, uh, this is Krishna's favor. The more attachment is there for the Lord, the more success is there for the devotee. That's what the, the more attached we get to Krishna, the more we call out to Krishna and helplessness, the more he will help us. It's not that, oh, we'll call to Krishna and he will not help. No, the more we call to him, the more he will help. The, Devki, the devotee he became, who became the mother of Krishna was not an ordinary woman. After all, who can become the mother of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Krishna agrees to become the son of son only of the most advanced devotee. In the previous lives, Devki and her husband underwent severe austerities. And when Krishna therefore appeared before them, wanting to give them a benediction, 
they told him that they wanted a son like God. So, so if we think that Vasudev and Devki, they are just ordinary people. They, yeah, they were born in the family of kings. So they were princes and princesses. No, they are, they are devotees of the Lord. To become the parents of the Lord is not an ordinary, no ordinary living entity can do that. So it, it said that in their previous lives, they did very severe austerities to attract the attention of Krishna. And when Krishna came, then he asked, I'm pleased by austerities. What do you want? They said, we want a son like you. But where are they going to get a son like him? No one else is like Krishna. No one is equal to Krishna. So he himself has to come. You know? But where can there be another person equal to God? That is not possible. God is asama or tava. That is, no one can be equal to or greater than him. There cannot be any competition. You know, this. it's not a competition. Oh, let's see who becomes God. You know, it's not like that. It, it, it's, it's not God is God. The God is not a position. It's not a post. It's not a post that somebody can apply for that post. No, God is just God. I cannot say I'm God, you are God, he's God, we are all God. No. One who says this is a dog, not God, for God is great and he has no competitor. No one is equal to him. Everyone is lower. Ekale Ishwara Krishna Ara Sabha Brittya. The only master is Krishna, God. And everyone else is his servant, including even great demigods like Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, not to speak of others. So there is no one on that same position as Krishna is. God is God. There is no one beyond God. There is nothing beyond God. There is nothing greater than God. There is no one greater than God. There is no one equal to God. No one can become God by doing any particular uh, practice, by taking up any particular meditation or path or anything. No one can become God. God is God. That's all. So... And then even the great demigods are his servants. Everyone, everyone is subordinate to the Lord. Shiva Vrinchid Nutam. In the Shastra, the Vedic scriptures, it is said that Lord Krishna has offered respect even by Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, the topmost demigods. The topmost demigods are also always worshipping Krishna. So we'll stop here for today and we'll continue reading tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening in and joining in. Were there any questions or comments? No, all good. Okay. Thank you so much. Kunti Maharani Ki Jai, Shla Prabhupada Ki Jai, Gaurav Hari Bol, Hare Krishna.